Ooh, what's good, family? It's your man, the YB. Back once again. Big shout out to my doggy DM for coming through and boosting the coins up 100%. So, Dillian, Bomillion, Shite, aka Dillian White, has aired out Deontay Wilder. He said the following I heard that Wilder still doesn't want to squabble me. He is the biggest fraud in all of sport. Never mind boxing. He hasn't actually beaten anyone of note yet. He is just a cowardly con man. Now, listen Dillian man, listen. You might know me already. People who follow the channel know already. I've already repented for my sins. Uh, Lord, I'm a sinner. Yeah, for many years I came on here and dragged Wilder, and talked about all the things Dillian White would do. Let me say now, once again, just in case anyone didn't hear it, just in case the Lord himself didn't hear it, yeah, I was wrong, I'm a sinner. Dillian White ain't gonna do nothing, apart from go to sleep, that's it, 100%. Dillian White will go in there, and go sleep, simple as that. Yeah, he won't put up a fight, he'll go in there, put his chin in the air, and get chipped and go to sleep, 100%. The same way he did against Tyson Fury. We heard all the same things about Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury a coward. Tyson Fury chicken leg. Tyson Fury duck me. Tyson Fury 5,000 days. All this kind of talk. Dillian White goes in there, turns southpaw, and then gets chinned. That's literally how the fight went. Dillian, honestly, if you had to break down how the fight went, you'd say southpaw, faff around, and then chinned. That would be, call me a liar. Dillian White genuinely, listen, it's one thing not landing a shot. All night. Dillian didn't even have a punch on target. The whole fight. God's honest truth. Go back and watch it. Dillian White didn't even get one punch on target. The whole night. Against a seven foot man. I, don't, I understand Tyson Fury is slippery. Yeah, but we've seen many people go in there and have a go. And get shots on target. Dillian White wasn't prepared to get stuck in. So it makes me laugh. That, yeah, there was a time... I'll be on here telling you, yeah, Dillian, talk your shit. Yeah, Dillian, air out Wilder. But I've got to be honest, Wilder, when he lost against Fury, he went out swinging. Yeah? And he took shots. He didn't just get... Listen, did, whatever you say about Wilder, he didn't get hit with the first shot and go sleep and jump on the floor. Yeah? No. Did he, Deontay Wilder got hit again and again and again and kept getting back up. You got chipped once and just sat down somewhere and took the check. After all that complaining, oh man, you know, my name Dillian and I'm from Brixton and I'm being underpaid, underpaid. You robbed a bank, honestly. That was a robbery, gotta be honest with you here. Dillian White robbed the fans. Pure. That was a proper old school, what they call it, a proper old school heist Dillian White had in that fight. To think he got paid $8 million for that. It wasn't even a sparring session. In sparring sessions, people actually exchange punches. There was no punches exchanged. Dillian White was bowling his shots over, missing by three feet, literally. And then gets clipped on the first... Listen, the first shot Tyson Fury landed clean, you're sleeping. You want to talk about Deontay Wilder as a coward? Deontay Wilder, compared to you, a warrior, 100%, certified warrior at that. He went in there, and listen, we know Wilder... Doesn't have the best technique. Nonetheless, he went in there and he he made it count. He was swinging. Never mind no technique. Wilder went in there and he swang until he couldn't swing no more. I salute that. You went in there and tried to box. Much like AJ really actually. You tried to box the big seven foot dude. Who does that? Dillian White went in there trying to box with Tyson Fury. And there you go then. Because you were scared to commit. And the worst thing is, or arguably the best thing is, you got punished for trying to be smart. You got put to sleep anyway. And that's why I rate Wilder, because even though you got put to sleep, yeah, he went out fighting. He showed, he was, you know what I mean, Wilder had a dog in, Wilder had a part in the fight. And and, and that's what, it, really, Wilder got rewarded. No one else has put Fury down like that. Wilder put Fury down twice in one round. So he did get rewarded. At one point, 
the fight was looking like going the other way and that's what having true courage does courage can take an average man and put him in any fight what Dillian White didn't have no courage and that's why never mind putting Fury down couldn't even get a shot on target never mind land a clean shot so I'm sorry I'm not going to be part of this bandwagon of oh let's rip Wilder yeah is Wilder perfect no aren't we all imperfect but for Dillian of all the people yeah to be critiquing Wilder it's not Dillian yeah Dillian you've got your own things you need to be cr- critiquing and the biggest joke of all the way Wilder, honestly the way Dillian White's carrying on yeah is as if he hasn't just announced a complete whopper of a fight check this out Dillian White will face Jermaine Franklin who the fuck is that in a heavyweight clash never heard of the guy and when I did some research into Jermaine Jermaine is useless Jermaine couldn't stop a bum I think it was Hatman's video someone did a video breaking down this fight yeah number one I've never heard of Jermaine Franklin but even if you have heard of Jermaine Franklin Jermaine Franklin went unanimous decision Jermaine Franklin went points with a guy that random bums have KO'd cold aka Jermaine Franklin has no power and Mr. Dillian White wants to fight a dude that no one heard of, complete bum. And you're talking about Deontay Wilder as a coward. Now I ain't gonna lie to you. At least Robert Hellenius was in form, in that sense. At least Robert Hellenius had done something. Robert Hellenius just lit up Kowalowski twice like a Christmas tree. So at least there was some fake form there. What's your excuse with Bermain Franklin? Yeah? What's your excuse with Jermaine Bumlin? Explain. Sorry, Jermaine Bumplin. What's your excuse? About coward. Nah, I'm not having it no more. Yeah, if you want to drag someone that need dragging, you know what I'm saying? But don't be throwing, I'm sick of people throwing stones in a glass house. And you're beyond a glass house. You've gone from doing nothing against Wilder, that you, uh, sorry, against Fury that you said you would, to now fighting a complete bummer. A proper one at that as well. This is shocking people. And no doubt it's going to be on some scam pay-per-view. So yeah. I ain't trying to hear no more from Dillian. Honestly. Get this guy out of here. Unless Dillian. In fact the only time yeah. I want to hear from Dillian. Is if he's fighting. Daniel Dubois. Or Joe Joyce. Why them two in particular? Because them two will tell me. Jadillion White serious about reasserting himself. Listen, anyone can fight AJ. AJ's a broken man and it's huge money. Who can't do that? I'd fight AJ for five mil. Do you understand? That's the I don't count. I ain't trying to hear about Dillian White fighting Fury. Sorry, AJ. I'm also not trying to hear about him fighting anyone else for that matter. For example, Dillian White versus Deontay Wilder. I ain't trying to hear about that. Why? Because again, it's five million pounds. Who won't do that? We know Dillian White got no shame. We know Dillian White happy to jump on the floor for five mil. That's why I want to see Dillian White go in there and put it on. Someone who isn't just all about the money, i.e. Dubois or Joyce. Them fights are dangerous, but don't provide huge money. That'll tell me, listen, this guy's serious. This guy really wants to prove he's serious about the game. And he's not just cashing out. And unfortunately, listen, we know Dubois wanted it. We know Joyce wants it. And he picks. He picks some US president sounding ass. SS Franklin. Okay, now. Where'd you find this guy at? Where where they find him at? Yeah? Thomas Franklin sounding ass. Anyway, Dillian. This guy, let him sit down somewhere. There was a, honestly, about two weeks ago, yeah, there was bubbling. Oh, Dillian White versus Joyce. I swear to God, I was thinking, bang, man. Listen, even though me and Dillian haven't seen eye to eye, I was going to come on here and say, listen, man, I'll salute Dillian because he really, he really about it. He really trying to make up for the bum fight he just put on against Fury. We also started hearing about Dubois. And I was thinking, yeah, man, listen, that's a proper fight, that is. A proper, proper fight. And instead, we get this crap. Nah, man, that don't work for me. 
I think the best situation here is, even though there's no hope, the best situation would be somehow Franklin washing this guy. Yeah, I'd love to see. I'd love to see Dillian White washed some more, but it's not likely to happen, unfortunately. And the sport at the moment, yeah, is in such a dire straits. It really is. This sums up Dillian White versus Jermaine Bumpkin. Sums up the state of the sport. I gotta be honest. All the top guys don't fight each other, and all the bum and sorry, all the top guys don't fight each other. They strategically wait around and try and find the bummiest opponent. Look at Tyson Fury. I'm sorry. I love Tyson. Well, I was starting to regain my, you know what I mean? Regain my whatever towards Tyson Fury. And then he retires. Fake retires. He's been out of the ring for eight months, it will be. And this is what we get. Derek Chisora. What the? F- Shocking. Of all the people, again, Daniel Dubois is around. Tyson Fury could fight Dubois, could fight Joyce, could fight whoever else is there. Anderson, Jared Anderson, Rio Propertes, Hergovic, Zhang, whoever you want. He picks Chisora. Even Bacoli. Fucking hell. I might even say, I think Fury beats all them. That's the worst thing about it. Fury beats all them. They are relevant fights. He picks Chisora. Who does that? These top guys are bum slayers. Bottom line. And it pissed me off. The whole way round. I'm sick of hearing about warm up fights as well. Yeah? There should be no such thing as warm up fights for top level guys. Honestly, for me, yeah, if I was running any of these governing bodies, I'd have a rule. Once you break into the top five, or once you break into the top ten, all you can fight is top tens. All you can fight is top fives. That's it. And if, after a year, you haven't fought any top fives, you're dropped. Simple as that, including champions. In fact, not even every year. Why am I saying every year? In what other job year do you only have to turn up once a year? No. Every six months. Every six months to remain in the top five, you have to have fought someone in the top five. If you don't like it, you can sit around and fight bums. Because the problem is, you see, in today's age, it's too easy. You can kind of pick and choose. One day you fight a bum, one day you fight... You know what I'm saying? No, that don't work. I remember years ago... My dad used to play squash, and basically, in the kind of county squash leagues, it'd be like, when you, there'd be like groups. Obviously, there's like 10 different leagues as such. The top league, you'd have to basically work your way into the top league. But once you're in the top league, you can only fight people in that league. Do you understand? Or you can only, sorry, play people in that league. And then if you drop, you know what I mean? If you lose too many games, you drop out into the into the league below, and then you have to build your way back up. But in boxing... It's kind of like, you can be this world champion, lineal champion, Tyson Fury, and somehow, you're fighting someone, top 20. That this shouldn't be possible. Once you're in the top 5, you fight top 5s. That's it. And if after 6 months, you haven't fought someone in top 5, I don't care what's going on. I don't care if you've got this, you've got that. No, every 6 months, like a metronome. Unless you've got a proper injury. And if you don't do that, you get relegated. For example, so it's top five and then it's six to ten. So if someone, for example, in top five, yeah, don't fight for six months, they get dropped into six to ten. Etc, etc. That's how it works. Or better yet, if you don't fight someone in top five after six months, you are then immediately ordered to fight. Someone in the 6 to 10 league. And that's how they come up. And if someone in that 6 to 10 league beats you, they are then take your spot essentially. And you then get dropped into the 5 to 15. Sorry, into 10 to 15. Immediately ordered to fight someone in, in the 10 to 15 league. That's perfect system, in fact. That's how it should work. That'd be perfect. A continuous pressure cooker. Because I don't get what it is, yeah. That's how it should be. If you are claiming to be lineal, if you are claiming to be one of the best in the world, you've got no business 
fighting people not in the top five. Yeah, and listen, I've got no problem. If Tyson Fury wants to fight top 20 dudes, he can do so. But that's all he'll do. Do you understand? In my world, yeah, we're not having this thing where, oh, I'll pick this one one day, I'll fight the top guy one day, and then I'll spend a year fighting. Nah. If you want to fight bums, fight bums. Drop the belt and fight bums. There's no contin. There's no what's the word? There's no continuity of a championship level guy. It's all over the place. It's not right. There's no reason it should be top fives fight top fives. Right now, for example, Tyson Fury should have the option of Andy Ruiz, Deontay Wilder. We just beat Dillian White. Yeah. Um, um, what's the guy's name? I've just said Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz, Joe Joyce, Dubois, Hergovic. Yeah? That's just a few I've named. Even for argument's sake, throw Luis Ortiz in there. I'd rather see Tyson Fury versus Luis Ortiz. At least we know Luis Ortiz coming to fight. We know Luis Ortiz, if he goes down, he get back up and try to fight some more. And I'm not saying Chisora to be fair, he will fight. But he's just not got he's just not that level. Yeah? Chisora has never been that level. There's no other there's no other dynamics there. At least Ortiz is Southpaw. Yeah? That's how it should be. Simple as that. Oh well why be Fury hasn't had much time. No. Fury's had eight months. Yeah? So if you can organise, and that's why it's so important, you see, it's so important to have these principles in the rule books, Because then there's no confusion. If you've got it, if it's in the statutes that you're required to fight every six months, then there's no confusion. There, there, there is no, oh, uh, we've only got two months left. No, no. Because you'd know, okay, I just fought in April. That means by October, I must have a top fight organised. Otherwise... I'm going to be dropped. So the system sorts itself out. There is no late minute. You know what I mean? There is no there is there is no stuff like that. Because you could say oh, well, be what happens if people what happens if people play around and there's pullouts. Well that's the great that's the beauty of the system. The beauty of the system is is that there can't be any messing about because everyone in the top 5 needs to fight every 6 months if you get what I'm saying. So no one can afford to to pull out and mess around cuz they're going to get dropped. Do you understand? The problem is today, today, yeah, there's no time constraints, is there? You can essentially sit around for a year and still maintain your top ranking. There's no pressure, which enables people to pick and choose. Oh, I don't feel like fighting. I need more rest, like Usyk. Yeah, do you understand? People like Usyk can say, oh, I need some time off, even though he's a champion. What the fuck? I'm sorry, yeah, time off and champions don't... I mean, look at every other sport. Look at football, for example. Yeah? The Premier League or the European champions, they can't say, oh, we've just become Premier League champions and we need six months off now. Do you know what I'm saying? Who does that? That doesn't work. No. Every other sport, yeah, it works. I don't know why it is about the fight game. I don't understand why the fight game's special. Every other sport has a set calendar. Boxing should have a set calendar. Champions and top five fighters fight every six months. That's the bottom line criteria. To be considered a top ten fighter, you fight every six months. That goes without saying. Yeah, if your body isn't fit enough. And let's not forget people, yeah. Every six months, really. Think about it for a second. Even if you have a grueling fight, yeah. Think about how much a, a think about yeah how much the human body recovers after six months. Sorry, think about how much the human body can actually recover yeah after a month. Thirty full days, and that's just one month. Six months, what the, f and and that's six months. Most fighters are fighting once a year. So like I said, if your body can't maintain fighting once every six months. You ain't a top five fighter. That's by definition in my world. 
if your body's, if you've got too many injuries and your body can't hold together for two fights per year, you ain't a top guy. That's, what, oops, that's how it works. Yeah, if your body's too weak, you can't string together two performances in in one year. You ain't, you ain't got no business being in the top ten. Yeah, that should go as standard. It's crazy. I've got I've, I've heard fans these days saying, "Oh, he needs a rest." What the fuck? He needs a rest. No, whatever lie. Usyk here yeah, has fought once. I think it's probably. I think Usyk yeah, has fought like twice in two years, and people are telling me he needs a rest. You fought once in the last year, and you need a rest. I've heard it all now. And that's fine, listen, you, you may need a you, In fact, you know what? You may well need a rest. If that's the case, drop the belts and you can have as much rest as you want. And you can fight top 10 to top 15 people. That's what you can do if you need a rest. Yeah? I'm sick of hearing about champions needing rest and needing time and retiring and needing warm-up fights. And that's the thing. The beauty of the system would be the fact they're forced to fight every six months would mean... There'd be no more talk of warm-up fights. Like, the way these guys spin these things. Oh, I need a warm-up fight. Well, no. You wouldn't need a warm-up fight if you was fighting every six months, as you should be. The whole reason you end up needing a warm-up fight is because you've sat around doing what for a year? In what other job, yeah, can people rock up once a year? What other occupation is that acceptable? I, f I work once a year. The fuck? Most people, are, most people, yeah, are lucky to have a break once a year. Never mind working once a year. It's really odd how how the whole how the whole how the whole culture in boxing is so so distorted. Everyone else is working three hundred and fifty days of the year. Oh, I'm a boxer and I can't put two. Six months periods together. Really? To be quite honest with you. It should be every four months. But we'll call it six months. Anyway. And it, it pissed me off here. Yeah. You've got four belt divisions. And not one of them have tried to innovate. I've been saying for a while. Not only about the six month thing. But I've been saying that. There should be. No weight cutting. Weight cutting is the biggest joke ever. There should be no weight cutting. People should be forced to fight at their natural weight. Yeah, there should be pre-fight weigh-ins. Just before you get in the ring, you weigh in. Yeah, you post your weight every day. On the blockchain or whatever. There should be some system where fighters post their weight every day. And you're not allowed to vary. Because really, when you're an athlete, when you're a super fine-tuned athlete, yeah, your body weight doesn't vary. There isn't a 10% variance in body weight. So everyone should be told, no more trying to cheat the weights. You fight at the weight you are. Simple as that. Stop trying to be smart and fight people smaller than you. Fight people your own damn size, weirdos. Everyone trying to get a little edge. Ooh, if I'm fighting, look, McGregor. McGregor's a 170 pound man trying to boil himself down to 140. Who does that? Weird ass dude trying to fight midgets. What a weirdo. Proper weird, isn't it? You gotta be, I'm telling you now, you gotta be a weird man, yeah, trying to fight midgets. I've also been saying about the gloves. Boxing gloves do nothing but cause more damage, more long term damage, and it's actually less entertaining. I believe the reason you see a lot less damage in UFC is because the KOs are a lot cleaner because of the glove size. By putting these big padded pillows on, it means. No shots concussive enough to put you out. So you end up taking, getting bludgeoned essentially. It's much better to have them little gloves on and just ping you once and you're out. Not to mention, obviously, it's also much more entertaining. Also, in UFC gloves, there's nowhere to hide. In boxing, top boxers know how to survive. For example, Gassiev versus Usyk. For example, Mikey Garcia versus Spence. In, with these big pillow gloves, it's possible to put your earmuffs on and just hide in the ring. In them UFC gloves, you can put your guard up all you want. Shots come flying through it. And that's how it should be. 
Boxing should be a test of real skill, not a test of, oh, I know how to put my gloves in a certain way that it's hard for other people to punch through them. UFC gloves would expose real clean defence. And also, because the UFC gloves are a lot smaller, it also means it tests accuracy. When you've got these big pillow gloves on, yeah, it's easy, you can pretty much hit anything. If you close your eyes and swing, and swing your hand in a boxing glove, you're going to hit something. In a UFC glove, it's a lot less accurate. Naturally, because it's a lot more... It's, short, it's tiny, it's like your fist. That, that, these are all the rules that should be. No more weight cutting. Small gloves. And every six months. The first division to install these things is going to take off. That will get boxing buzzing again, in my opinion. Them three rules. Open it all back up. Instead, these four divisions between them. IBF, WBO, WBA, WBC. None of them. They're all dinosaurs. Just doing what's always been done. It's Honestly, it's mad. It's crazy to think. No change. Anyway, I've digressed. But the whole thing pissed me off, to be honest with you. These fights shouldn't be happening. Yeah? Wilder versus Hellenius. Actually, in all honesty, Hellenius... Well, no. Hellenius wouldn't be top five. But Hellenius would be top ten. After his two wins over Kawanaki. So, Wilder versus Hellenius isn't so bad. But this fight here... White versus Franklin... Sorry, White versus Bumpklin is bad. Super duper bad at that. Get this guy out of here. I ain't trying to hear no more from Bumillion Shite. 